attention to this constant. So I know that the mass is 15 kilograms of a flat surface with a force of 90 newtons. So force applied is 90 newtons. And then I directed along the handle. The handle has been set at 40. Okay, the horizontal refer to that, and then they want us to draw a free body diagram for the lawn mower. Free body diagram for the lawn mower. So, and I look at the lawn mower, I can see that this force applied it's in that direction, which can still be translated to that sort of direction. Then we have the weight, we shall have the normal force. And then uh, is there friction? Definitely, there has to be friction. Definitely, because it's grass. So with what I'm going to do since it's for mass, so I need a minimum of four forces. So I can indicate my N, and then I can indicate my weight. I can indicate my F friction and then the force applied since it is just in that direction. So in most cases, we dislike components, forces, just want the forces themselves. Then 2.1.2, why is it correct to say that uh, the moving lawnmower is in equilibrium? Okay, what would be the explanation is for one mark. So we could say that it's in equilibrium because uh, the lawnmower is moving at a constant speed. And for as long as the constant speed, the net force is zero. The left-hand side is go to the right-hand side. Okay, the force being applied, which is just a component, should be equal to the frictional force. So we can say that it's moving Okay, it's moving at a constant speed. It's moving at a constant speed. That's the acceleration. That's the acceleration. It's zero. Okay. And then they want us to calculate the magnitude of the friction of course acting between the lawnmower as well as the grass. Okay, so since we already know that um, it's moving at a constant speed, let me just try to break this down. If this is a 40 with a horizontal, which means this is also a 40. Okay, if I try to resolve this applied force into components, going to be in this sort of direction, down and... Okay, so it's going to be F, the sign of 14, this is going to be F, also 14. So looking at the number of forces that are acting on the lawnmower horizontally, I'll only have... Um, I can start by saying F net is zero, or F net is equal to MA. Then um, my F Force of it's fine. I can say cos of what should be equal to my frictional force. So that's a ninety times the cos of what it. Okay, so I put that into my calculator. I end up with sixty eight. Comma nine four. Okay, sixty eight comma nine four newtons. Since the direction of motion is just horizontal, then we focus on the horizontal component. Okay, then uh, the next part they are telling us that the lawnmower comes to stop. Okay, calculate the magnitude of the constant force that must be applied through the handle in order to accelerate the lawnmower from rest 
up to two in a time of that. So we have our V initial the zero. The velocity with it with 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 which the lawnmower is moving is two meters per second, and then within a time of three seconds. I assume that the frictional force between the lawnmower and the grass remains the same as 68,9. What is the question asking for? Magnitude of the constant force that must be applied. Okay, so that does not take away what do you call this thing? It does not take away the 40 degrees at which a applied force is at two. So you can start by determining the acceleration of the lawnmower itself, okay? We can say that our V final should be equal to V initial plus A multiplied by delta T, okay? So our final velocity, if it's a two, the initial is zero because they told us that it's moving from rest. Plus now the acceleration multiplied by the three seconds. So when I divide both sides by three, my acceleration becomes two over three, which is a 0 0.6, I can say seven meters per second. Okay, so that would be just the first step. Then if I apply, where should I write this? Let me just jot it here. If I bring in the F net is equal to MA, what I need is the constant force, which is F. But we know that the horizontal component has to be F, the cos of 40. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to say F applied minus my frictional force should be equal to the mass of the lawnmower. They told us the mass, which is 15 kilograms. Okay. Multiplied by the acceleration that we just got up there. So this is going to be F applied, the cost of 40 minus our 68. 0.94. Okay, should be equal to 15 multiplied by, let me use 2 over 3 straight away just to avoid the decimals. So this is going to be F cos of 40 is equal to, that's going to be a 10 because by 3, 1 by 3 is 5. So 10, when I add that, when I have 78,94. And then when I divide both sides by the cos of 40, so 78, okay, divided by the cos of 40, I end up with 103, comma 05 newtons. So that should be our force applied. All right, so that is that. That is that with that question. Then 2.2, .2. a planet Y has a radius, okay, of this much, and then a 10 kg mass weighs 20 newtons on the surface of planet Y. I clear the mass of the planet Y. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one thing we know about Newton's law of universal rotation is that the force that is experienced between the bodies must be the same. Okay, so regardless of um, how big or how small it is, so if a 10 kg is experiencing this much of force, which means the 10 kg must also apply this much of force onto the planet Y. So from F is equal to G M1, M2 over R squared. 
So which means my force is gonna be 20. The question wants the mass. So if I called my G to, no, I know my G from the information table, six comma six, seven times 10 to the negative 11. I'm multiplying it by the 10, multiplying it by the mass of Y. And then they told us the radius is six comma. That's I just gonna have six times 10 to the five. Everything must be squared, okay? So I can uh, simplify the right hand side, I can exclude that M1. So six comma six seven times ten to the negative eleven. Okay, I'm multiplying it by ten. And then um I'm dividing everything by 6 times 10 to the exponent of 5, but squared. That's giving me 1,85 times 10 to the negative 21 my. And then I have to divide both sides by that, so I'm going to say my 20, let's just have that. And then we're saying 20 divided by my answer, 0.85. 